Hi everybody! My name's Sean, I'm Fire of Life 2018, and today we're playing Furthest Frontier. Um, I shouldn't say today, because obviously I've been playing it for quite some time. I have logged 150-ish hours into this game. Not this particular playthrough, this is my third playthrough. I am at about a year 100. Um, I have 1600 population and space for 2300 colonists. Uh, this is my industrial sector. Like, I've, this is the how I've protected my uh, goods, I guess. Like, I started with my, uh, this is the town hall, and then I built a trading hub, a vault, and a storehouse. And my storehouse is set up to only hold usable goods. Like, I tried to keep all just the expensive stuff here originally. So, like, um, I've since branched out when I've got... My uh, industrial area has slowly, you can see, like, this is the first one I made. And I expanded and added the glass maker and another sawmill, another wagon right. Uh, I believe this is my second blacksmith. Yes, second blacksmith, because they're highlighted in white there. Um, potter building. I believe I only have one of those, but I, 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 I did. I put down one by the clay. That's something I've done a lot more on the third playthrough, is I started playing a lot more attention to logistics. I wish they had a lot better logistics. Like, you can put storehouses and things around where you need to. Like, I just put a whole bunch of, like, fire splitters over here because the charcoal, uh, like, the brick makers, they're running through coal. Uh, I might have it over here for the pottery, maybe? Yeah, it uses firewood. But so does, like, this whole thing. And this is where the wood is, so hopefully they can take, like, this, this building is producing wood. Because they plant two trees and cut one, so they have this like ripple effect. As you can tell, like this is the mature trees because they've already planted like the ones around them are sprouts. That's kind of growing out. That's pretty cool. So we're finally getting a plus into firewood, which took me forever to learn that if you open your resources screen and you click on the resource, it'll tell you how many you gained in like a monthly situation. Um, this isn't, however, like indicative of actual growth. <laughs> It, it's not, it, that the logistics of this comes down to harder bits, but if you go up to the reduced goods section, that's another thing that bothers me. I wish that if I clicked a different window, the other window behind it would close automatically. Maybe a way I could set that or change that, but like if I'm building something and you're like, oh, let me check my resources, and then you're like, oh, well, let me check this other thing. So now I've got like five menus open, trying to be like, Maybe it's just me because I'm ADHD, but I'm like, what is happening? Um, but you can look at like the overall. Like I'm producing more um, proteins. You hit the plus sign, and it'll tell you specifically which ones. Like I am, I am consuming more smoked meat than I am producing. I am producing a great deal of fish, and then not like there are eight thousand fish, and then I'm only consuming. 900? That has to be a typo. It says we're getting 41 a month. Um, like, there, there's some glitches in that, too. There's no way that that's right. So while the game does pretty good of a logistic balance, there, there's definitely some problems there. I'm not even sure if they're still developing this game. I'm playing it in 2022, and I'm um, 2024, and I believe this came out in 2022. So I'm producing more vegetables, I am producing more fruit, I am producing more dairy. I make food per farmer is 172, and food per farm area is 58. That's huge. I don't think I've ever had one that big. Um, as you can tell at the beginning of this, I did the, my second playthrough. I chose to play on a map that did not have much fertility, and it really helped me understand how fertility worked in this game, and how important it really is to your crops. Um, so if you start, if you look at all my crop fields now, one of my other tips is keep your livestock in your orchards. Like the reason these green squares are green, green, like deep fertile now, is because that's where I have my livestock um, grazing. So they've fertilized my orchards, which f produce food, but the livestock don't eat. And I mean, maybe they eat the stuff that falls. So we don't count it, but I don't get little alerts all the time telling me that the livestock, it, like this has been lost of livestock. I finally had to put in some more hay over here, and that's because they've, we've been adding fertilizer to that. But that's why we're making so much hay. 
because we were having problems with um, feed quality. But I have livestock, I have apiaries amongst all the trees, so I'm trying to make the best use of the land I have. Um, I have tons and tons of wagon drivers. I haven't really figured out if the wagon drivers are, um, if it's crucial about where they are. But it seems to me that like once you've built the wagon, unless they don't have a task, they're sitting, like they're out doing their job. So it's not really relevant where these are. I mean, I put them here because they're kind of centralized between the housing and the like industrial side. But, like I've got my storage for the food here. I've got storage for food here. I've got more storage for the resources over here. I've got more storage. Now that these are all done, I gotta go back and add shoemakers. Which is another thing that annoys me about this game is that I can't add people. Like, I wish I could do it from this screen. Like, I wish it would say, like, this is how many you have active. Like, it does up here. You, I have 78 builders available if I need them. But I'm only using 12. And the number you plot, and it's and like this auto refill really ought to be like in within that building like once I've set that limit but then if you want to go to set a limit you have to go click a thing and then hope this person leads you to their place of employment this guy's going to get books he's probably gonna have to walk all the way over to the bookseller carry it all the way back across town Although he picked up a piece of pottery. So he's stocking his own house. These are the uh, stables and the fort. This is this is kind of a like a defensive trap with the fort. Cuz I made it like obviously you see how many dead people. Like this 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 is a year this is 100 years. So I mean like Basically, everybody that originally started my settlement is long dead. So, I mean, I've got a lot of dead people. Those are 300s, 400, 500, plus this little one that was a thing. And then I put a mausoleum on top of it, which has got 800 people in it. Good grief, I've had a lot of people die in this town. There was a, a thing of um, smallpox. Is that There was a whole, a whole deal where the whole town had smallpox. But luckily, my... Um, town setup is done in a way that makes like legit like makes that not not a big deal <laughs> so the way I set up towns is I start with the market which is obviously like the most crucial point and then I build my um, like desirability giving items here in the middle and then put my houses on the outside like obviously I know I have to put a little bit on the outside because this one's not quite to a desirability level obviously and they're not getting three types of food which is crazy to me because it seems like I have cheese, I have bean, I have fruit, I have meat, I have bread, I have roots, I've got, I have all the food. Except for berries and mushrooms, and I have places out doing that. Like, we do gain, like, we got five mushrooms this year, and a thousand berries. Like, I wish there was a way to plant berries. Gotta say, I wish there was a way to plant berries, or perhaps even mushrooms. Like, why could I not, why could I not farm mushrooms? Um, the books are used to give people happiness. The buildings are on fire. That goes back to building your town. All of my towns, all of my little towns have wells everywhere. I usually build them on the corners on the outside and then one in the middle. I um, built this enormous grid system and built my two expensive buildings, the temple and the theater, which you hardly ever see a theater get to level two. At least I didn't for my first two playthroughs. But when they're in the middle like this, it's totally worth investing because these things have incredible radiuses of desirability increase. Um, you got to be careful what you put down that requires maintenance gold. So I mean, all these have gotten evolved into manors, and all these are large houses, and you can tell how I've been further and further out. Um, I put another theater down because there are two sand pits here. That I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade it just because it gives a better desirability point. It costs me it costs me more money, but not as much as two of them, so it's a better bet to upgrade your uh, temple. No, not temple theater. I also put over a library. Um, 
I have issues with the rats. I wonder if I put down a rat catcher. The easy way to tell if you put down a rat catcher is to go see if you can build one and oh, there is not a loot. So I've, uh, obviously I missed one. There you go. And they're missing water. Like I haven't gotten down to put in. This was my newest attachment, as you can tell. See, so I need to put down some wells, and it looks like this is gonna be the best one. And that one's already got one over there. I'm gonna place one over here. Oh, we're getting raiders. Good time. Good times. I I don't know why it will accept three people. Of course, I will accept three people. So the raiders happen, and I'm gonna pause the game. So I can go back and alert my town to that fact. You hit Z, takes you back to your uh, home situation. Uh, I will not call anybody out of a barracks yet, because I have many protections. Of course, they're going in the wrong direction, and that's not good. So I'm going to uh, rally the horsemen, the defensive stance here, rally the Infantry, substance here. Because I do believe I forgot to put defenses here, did Damn it. I got got too comfortable, and the game has told me what for. 229 raiders. See, normally, they were just coming straight in through here. Because all of my valuable stuff, that's why I had this happen. And I guess I've now <clears throat> enforced that enough that they see this side as the weakest point. Which is probably not good for me because it undoubtedly is the weakest point. And I bet it's because I put this stupid theater out here. This made this like just prime picking. Because I can go oh I can go loot this library and loot Oh man, this is gonna suck for me. Um let us hope that our troops will save us. I'm also going to call the barracks over, guys, so hopefully it'll just be these archers, and uh, right, see there's the one guy trying to, trying to make a run for the valuables, these guys are all, oh no, right, this is not good for me, I mean, like, I definitely have, like, defenses, in my city, and there are three walls. This is not good for me. Not good for me at all. Like, here comes the troops, though. So at least we're not going to let our people just die. They're running through. I guess they're trying to get... I mean, they're getting shot at now. It does appear that the boys are coming in. The literal cavalry is here. Oh, look, we got an artifact. Trees go faster and produce more. So while not ideal, we are like we're we're kicking them back here. They're making runs for it. I mean, there's 229 of them somewhere. That's why I like, and they often send in spaces. Like they'll send in separate batches, and there's no way to really know. Like there's no mini map. It doesn't tell you where they are unless you click. You can click this button. Seven villagers have died. Oh, look! Um, I think all we lost was the lookout tower. Ah. Uh, and a house. Someone lost their house to the raids. I see. But that's good to know that we, um... We're well prepared for that. You click this button there. 
That tells you where. See, I wish there was a th like a repair all. Can I please get a repair all? Oh my god, I would love, love, love that. So it's like the village was raiders, 229 and 100. We killed 183 of them. And it looks like we only killed. Yeah, they didn't get him to the healer's house in time, which is funny because it's right there. Like, that's that's definitely a problem I have. Like, the battle took place in this hallway. Oh, there was somebody else who just died, and the healer's house is literally right there. They're gonna rebuild the house before putting back the dead people. I'm not sure if I was supposed to do something about that. I'm very concerned. I don't know, maybe it's because I don't have enough people. I'm not sure. And I, I wish this would change. Like, it's going to follow. The, like, I can keep clicking this, and it, it takes me all the way up here. But you're like, oh, so they come from over here, I guess, is the whole point. Maybe I should drop down a... Yeah. Okay, so we got sidetracked. You got to see how the raid worked out. I'm uh, going to upgrade these. The new all, You can hit the Manage Walls tool. I'm gonna just go ahead and select these all and turn them all to stone. You have to hit every time. It doesn't save, so you gotta hit X, then highlight. Then X, and then highlight. Oops. X, then highlight. Alright, upgrade. So theoretically, that's going to upgrade all of those walls, and I didn't put down a... The best way to do that is to use the, the rangefinder. Dude. Let's not have that happen again. Get that good and covered. And rebuilt. Also, the speed goes back down every time it raids. So this is this was my housing setup. You see it repeated over and over and over again. I made little squares, and every time I started, I would just put in a little box, and I'd put up walls around that box. And then I would just expand a box every time I needed more humans. This one, I started altering that pattern a little bit, because once you got into the... Like, I don't know if there's a way to turn desirability on other than clicking a house. But once you click this, it puts up like a... a Cool map. Like the more purple it is, the more desirable it is. So like, squeeze in houses elsewhere. Like this was already built at eighty-seven percent desirability. But I'm unsure if this is in like not all of the ranges. Like there's not a way to turn that on. So like, there you can't put a house there because they're not like this one's not being taxed. I mean, I, I could put a house there, but I don't believe it's making me any money because no one like you know, it's supposed to be in a range of this in order to provide services. So that's, you see it over and over again. Each one of those is an option. But I think this is when I finally got it to, to stabilize. Like, I feel like I finally have, every, everybody's got everything they need. Like, making hide coats and shoes, I can't tell you. I probably still need more tannery. Like, look at how many how many cobble cobbler shops there needs. There needs to be an upgrade for that. Cause I should, I mean, like, I shouldn't need that many buildings to make shoes. Can I, can I get a third, like, maybe even on the fourth tier? Let me have one that says like shoe factory, and I can like use this heavy machinery and makes lots of factories. Speaking of heavy machinery, if they're gonna fix this game, there's something going on with the heavy machinery in the blacksmith world. Like, I, I can. They can't make weapons and heavy machinery at the same time. And I use the production situation to pause, but now they're just going to make tools and tools and tools. So I've got, and, and they still can't really keep up. Like it says we mount the tools, but I never ever have a surplus of tools. And I have two blacksmiths. I'm, I have four uh, forge, uh, foundries or smelteries now because they're upgraded. But you're like, how many people does it take to make like the mining industry? I don't know if this game is balanced for that. Like I don't know if that's even the point, but that definitely needs to change. And I always forget that there should probably be like a timeout situation. Also, may maybe this game is designed to stop at a thousand because they have a built-in like there's a cap in 
the setting system for your personality, uh, your, uh, maximum villagers. So, like, it's set to a thousand at default, so I disabled that. But, uh, it took me forever to figure that out. And the production controls for, like, firewood and archery items and things that you that they can end up getting too many of um, you can turn that off if you click on these it gives you a, a minimum quota that's how many they want and maximum is when they'll stop making it so like this is when they start making it and it, like once it goes below this number is when they start making it and once it goes above this number is when they would stop making it which theoretically works except for these large machinery things because if there isn't um, 15 iron ingots available for them to use no notification happens, no nothing. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to make tools. They just keep making tools. So they go and go, oh, there's not 15 armor, so I'm just going to take these five ingots and then go back and make a sword with it, as opposed to waiting for the the, the storage, like going back and forth to get the five ingots and the storage, stor until the storage is enough to make the thing they need to make. That is, that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. Um, I've discovered that the farms in 12 by 12 increments are the most labor efficient way to do that. Uh, I make a few smaller ones here and there because of the for space reasons, but I also put apiaries around my crops as well, and those help. You need tons of honey, tons of wheat. Um, you gotta put down tons of granaries and tons of root cellars. Probably not so many storehouses or um, stockyards, but I didn't realize that either. I thought it, my very 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 first playthrough, I only put one stockyard, one. I was like, why is this not working? <laughs> So, I wish there was a better way to organize, like, prioritize the stock situations, like, because I want them to be able, like, I'd like my farmers to be able to put the wheat into these granaries and cellars and stuff that are over here by them as, like, a last resort, but you want to fill the storages that are closer to your homes and things first, like this one that's all the way over here. I wish I could just put a wagoneer and assign this wagoneer to, uh, just run back and forth with from one thing to the other, like filling stock stockpile one way or the other, so nobody has to keep, like, right now, these vi these villagers, if they need to firewood or stuff over here, or root cellars or whatever, they got, they run. Like, they have to run away, all the way across town to get something, and that takes a long time for a villager to walk, like, from across town, like, this, like that from that storage yard to this storage yard, and then back to that storage yard. It takes a long time. So you kind of think, oh, well, if I built a Wagoneer next to it, they would just go back and forth to Wagoneers. Like, maybe you could attach a Wagoneer to a storage unit and be like, this Wagoneer and this storage unit, they're just going to go back and forth, like, making sure that that storage unit has what it needs from this storage unit. Like, you could do a flow of goods, like everything that gets stored in this storage unit is transferred to the other storage unit by this wagon. I don't know. I'm not a game developer. But I would say that that would be some, some way to, to do that. I would also like to be able to select all of my archers and go here, select all of my pikemen and go here. Um, you kind of have the idea with that here, but it doesn't work well. Like you just saw that by the time the raid happens and I discover where they are, it, they're already breaking down my walls, but not, not for long. It's going to be soon, soon all stone. Make sure that I got everything. Yeah, I know I missed one. Perhaps even two. Yep. That one is currently upgrading. So that's a thing. That is a thing. So this has been Furthest Frontier. I probably should cut it short. This is probably longer than most people would watch on YouTube anyway. But it's been super addictive. Like, 150 hours is not like the longest game time I've ever had in any game by any means. But to binge watch it, like I feel like I've just been constantly playing it for like days and days and days, and it's it's addictive. I wish they would work on their um, alerts a little more. Um, oh, that's the coal mine we're out, you guys. No way. I wish they would work on the alerts no more because they're uh, oftentimes like it's the same like alerting thing for something simple. Like the mine is out of ore, should not go away. Like it should stay up there. Like if I let this pace go through and this thing clicks on it's just going to disappear 
So if I happen to not be looking at the screen right now, that would just go away and I would never notice that this is out of order. I would never be like, I'd be like, why has my coal gone down so much? And it's because, oh, I forgot. There's a whole other mine situation not working. Uh, that would be nice. This building's condemned situation. Because this is weird to me that I, like, I have... 78 builders and 101 free lit. So there's 170 people running around trying to fix things. And this is where the vast majority of my, like 83 people, I, that many people died in the plague last year. And I'm not sure what they're doing when the laborers are doing stuff. And I mean, like, I have labor camps that are making wood. I have labor camps. I have mines that are doing stone. I am at a loss. Now all of my coal is coming from here. And I'm pretty much maxed out at coal because every every other piece of coal on the map is gone. So I'm like, I'm not sure what kind of end game. I really think there is definitely a uh, like this is a stopping point. I'm gonna see how long it goes and see how high I can get the population. Um, but this is the best systems I've got for you here for you. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave those in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. If you want to see more furthest, further, furthest Frontier content, let me know in the comments. Also, check out our live stream. We do every day the morning wake and bake over on Twitch, Eastern Standard 10 time at uh, 8, 9.30 to 10.30 every day. Alright, so we will see you next time. Bye!